What's up everybody, Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy, jumping on real quick to welcome you to our video. In today's video, we are going to reveal the most effective study strategy for you to crush your civil FE or PE exam, so you're not gonna wanna miss it. And that's not just me just saying something out of the blue, totally wacky. And that's based on research that's taken 13 years to, to gather. And it's based on students that have scored really well on exams and how they did that. They got great exam results using the strategies that we will be sharing in this video. So if you're looking to crush your civil FE or PE exam, these strategies you can apply to your very own study. So stick with me to the end because it's going to be coming up right after this. <laughs> All right, so here's a little background information for you. There is a company called Elevate Education that has spent the last 13 years going to various countries, including Australia, the United States, and the UK, and observing how students take exams. They've been benchmarking the highest performers that actually take exams. And they're doing this so that they can find out what actually drives these students to find success. What is driving the success that they have as they take exams? And their research found out two important things that you need to know. First, 90% of students thought that their IQ or how smart they were was the indicator of how well they would do on the exams that they were taking. And the second thing that they found out was that that belief was wrong. There's another variable that can make a huge difference on you passing your civil FE or PE exam, and you're probably not doing it enough. And what is it? Practice exams. So why are practice exams a better indicator of your success than say in knowing an individual topic itself? Well, there are a couple reasons for that. All right, the first one is, is the fact that an exam doesn't test how much you remember about a topic, but how you use what you remembered about it. You could remember every single formula with every one of the variables involved and what each of them stand for, but if you don't know how and where to apply them, it doesn't really make a difference. So practice exams bridge the gap between your knowledge of the theory and the application of that theory. So that's the key, right? application of that theory. In the research done by Elevate Education, only 11% of students were taking practice exams prior to their official exam, while 89% were either reviewing their notes or making them for the first time. So while those 89% were only to remember what they studied during the exam, those 11% were able to analyze the information on the exam, evaluate the given situation, and develop arguments and possible solutions. The second reason is uh, a psychological finding that basically is based on the research on learning called the testing effect. So what is this? It simply states that when you take a practice exam under test-like conditions, you have to retrieve information about what you've already studied from your memory, making it easier for you to remember this information in the long term. In other words, taking a test on what you have already studied helps you remember more of it in the future, including on exam day. So what are the key takeaways from all of this? Even though getting a handle on the theory is important, and you know it is because there's a ton of theory on the exam, but, and this is a very important but, you cannot take just practice exams because you want to take practice exams and thinking that you're going about it the right way. You need to take these practice exams with a couple set of guidelines that I'm gonna talk about for you to really make sure you're studying these effectively. The first guideline that I have for you is that you absolutely have to incorporate these into your study schedule. When you are developing a schedule or a study plan for your FE or PE prep, you have to make sure that not only are you studying these theory concepts and conceptual concepts, but you have to make sure you're blocking time to take practice exams. These will really help you identify topics that you need to hone in on and zoom in on because they are your weaknesses. All right, guideline number two is to take the exam in lifelike testing conditions. This means set up the restrictive time schedule that you are only allowed to take this exam with and uh, really put the pressure on to take it in an environment that's very similar to the testing environment. Guideline number three is to use the resources that you have uh, at your disposal during the exam. Now, if you're taking the FE or the PE exam, this obviously means 
that you've got to use the handbook. That's what they give you for the exam. Uh, if you're taking the PE exam, you've also have codes and standards at your disposal as well. But have those up on a laptop in a digital format, similar to the real exam that you can search because you want to create this environment that's like the real exam. And so making sure you have those reference materials at your disposal is a, another key guideline to helping you prepare for this. Guideline number four has to deal with when you're going to take a practice exam. And we recommend taking one very early on in your studies. This will really set a benchmark for you as to where your weaknesses are. So, you know, whether that's one or two weeks into your study, but very near your study uh, time where you kick this thing off, try to take one to see where your knowledge and where your gaps are at the very start. And that way you can focus on the areas that you really struggle with. Guideline number five is that you don't have to take a practice exam for the full length of the exam. You can chop this up into blocks that work for you and your life. Obviously you have a life, you have a, a life outside of taking practice exams, a life outside of study. And I want to make sure that you have that life. So, you know, if you only have two hours, block off two hours and get through as many problems as you can in two hours. If you have four hours, do that. If you have six hours, as you creep up closer to the exam period, you probably want to up the hours just to get a more lifelike experience. But in any case, you can tailor those study hours for a practice exam to really the time you have available to you because you obviously have a life outside of this. All right, guideline number six is basically to use the results of the practice exam to help guide you in your studies. So as you take a practice exam very early into your studies, it will obviously show your weaknesses and also your strengths. And from there, you can really tailor your studies to really hone in on the areas that you need to give more emphasis to. And guideline number seven is to actually take multiple practice exams. I'm not taking just one, you know, let's take three or so. Um, there's a, a plethora of exams out there that you can grab. But the point here is that you want to take one early. You want to probably take one somewhere in the middle of your studies. You want to take one closer to the end of your studies. Each of those trying to take like a real exam in the environment that you set up for yourself because uh, practice makes perfect and doing more practice exams is only going to further help you when it comes down to the real day to take your exam. All right, so you know you need to take practice exams, probably as many as you can fit into your schedule if possible. But like I said, you know, three or four is probably going to be great. But the next question is, is where should you get them? What You know, what's out there? And today, that's actually pretty simple. I mean, there are a ton of resources out there at your disposal. Now, there's obviously a classic way, you know, you're going to go the try and true way and getting books from reputable resources that have been around for a very long time. And that includes companies like PPI, which offer the Civil Engineering Reference Manual or the CERB. That was the go-to book for many, many years uh, for help helping those study for the PE exam. They even have an associated book that gets paired with that, the Practice Problem Book, and it works really well together. I highly recommend those. Some of the common complaints people may have is that the problems are longer than what's on the real exam, but it doesn't really matter. You're getting practice and you're getting exposure to those problems. And if that's a resource that you want to check out, go check out civilengineeringacademy.com slash PPI. That is our affiliate link that'll take you there and uh, you'll be able to check out that resource. Another great resource out there is School of PE. Now they've recently updated a lot of their manuals if you're studying for the PE exam and they have a little bit more modern flair on things. They have QR codes they, that take you to different sections either of the handbook or to get additional help or meeting the instructor, which are always fun. And we've done review videos on those. You can definitely check those out as well. Um, but they have good stuff there too. You can check those guys out at civilengineeringacademy.com slash SOPE. Now, the second way to get resources is obviously through online resources. There's lots of them. Many websites offer practice exams and practice material in general. Some of them are free, while others require a small investment. Civil Engineering Academy is definitely one of them. You can find practice exams for both the FE and the PE exam at civilengineeringacademy.com exams. And we also have tons of video practice problems on this very YouTube channel that you can check out here. Uh, tons of them. Feel free to grab as many as you want there. 
uh, with more being added every single week. So definitely check those out and give us a subscribe and, and maybe a like too, because we love producing that stuff and sharing that with you. And finally, the other way to take practice exams is by going out and finding a review course that actually has them as part of the course. Companies like PPI and School of PE and even us here at Civil Engineering Academy offer review courses for both FE and PE exams. These review courses typically include instruction on the material covered on the exams as well as practice exams and material for you. And even though a review course does cost money, it's definitely worth the investment for sure and we highly recommend taking a review course. Many of you have been out of school for a long time or have postponed taking your exams and a review course is definitely going to help you uh, hold your hand to the fire and get through this thing. All right, so now you know why you should be taking practice exams to help you crush your civil FE or PE exam. And most importantly, really understand how you should be realistically taking those practice exams so when it comes to the real deal, you'll be prepared for it. Now, I know this all might seem overwhelming with the amount of information and the amount of material that's out there, and maybe you feel like you don't have support or feedback um, that you have at your disposal. Here at Civil Engineering Academy, we've got some fun stuff that's gonna help you out on your journey. For example, the Ultimate Civil FE Review course, which is the course we've created, comes with two full practice exams that you can take anytime you want along this journey. It also gives you a complete CBT exam simulator that gives you a very close simulation of what you're going to be dealing with on exam day. So not only do you get two practice exams, we also give you a CBT exam that's very much like the real deal. Handbook on the left, problems on the right, all of that good stuff. If you're interested in that and you're studying for the FE, go check out civilfereviewcourse.com. And if you're taking the PE exam, we've got one of those for you too. Go check out civilpereviewcourse.com. You can get access to two breadth exams that we've got there for you. We've got depth exam for you as well. And we also have a CBT exam simulator as part of that course as well with your handbook and code references and problems on the right. All of that good stuff is there so that you can really put the pressure on well beforehand to get this exam in a lifelike experience. If you're interested in that, just go to civilpereviewcourse.com and you'll be on your way to becoming a professional engineer. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope this was very uh, helpful to you. Make sure that you apply all that we talked about today uh, about practice exams. I promise you that as you do them, you will be able to crush your own exams. And if you need anything else or any other topics covered to help you on your own journey to passing your FE or PE exam, uh, definitely let us know. But also check out all the resources we have for you at civilengineeringacademy.com. I promise we've got something there for you that'll help you on your journey. All right, so thanks for being here, and we'll see you next time. Bye.